Good morning, dear students. Happy to see you all again. Thank you for your cooperation all these days. I hope you are all enjoying listening to the classes and you are responding. Uh, those who are uh, not doing it, update yourself. Uh, days are different. Let us uh, cope up with this. Let us pray and start. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the beautiful morning and the rain you have given for us. It's a sign of blessing. Lord, the same way we are pleading you, Master, to chase away all the virus, unnecessary pathogens that are causing germs, that are causing diseases on us. Lord, let it go away from the world. Let it go away from all the people, Lord. Those who are suffering, Lord, we are praying especially for them this morning. Lord, be with them. Take away all the dangerous situations from them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, coming to our portion, today's uh, phylum 3, we are going to discuss. The first one is Tenophora. C is a silent form. Tenophora, it's a Greek term. Tinos means comb and phoros means bearing. So, comb bearing animals, organisms are called tenophora. Uh, coming to the uh, features, external features or uh, general features of uh, tenophora. Tenophores are exclusively living in the marine. Marine means sea water, ocean and they are radially symmetrical. And they are diploblastic animals with the tissue level of organization. What is tissue level of organization? Last uh, uh, phylum, the previous one, we learnt that it is cell uh, gradation, isn't it? Now, tenophora, it is a tissue level of organization. And uh, they are diploblastic animals, we said. But uh, here in this uh, diploblastic animal, they are mesoglia, jelly-like layer, substance of uh, it is different from the nidarians, so somewhat better than uh, the nidarian, the previous class cilindrata. And uh, it contains amoebocytes, amoebo, amoeba means moving, sites means cells. So amoebocytes moving cells and it has got smooth muscle cells and uh, they have uh, external or they have eight external rows of ciliated comb plates called comb and uh, it can be seen in uh, uh, pleurobrachia it is called comb jelly see here it is a row of ciliated comb plates okay so it, this is the speciality of this uh, tenophora and uh, it helps in the stenophora <laughs> here in uh, this eight external rows of ciliated combs in what way it is helpful they are helpful in uh, locomotion that is uh, comb jellies and uh, walnuts sea walnuts you can see here these are the comb plates these are embedded here so, this side four you can see and the other side four rows you can see. Okay. And bioluminescence, that is the ability of emitting light is one of their uh, uh, marked character of this uh, tenophores. And it does not have any nematocyst, children. The previous one we said that uh, a presence of nematocyst, isn't it? But here, uh, lack of nematocyst, but uh, it possesses a special cell called the lazo cells or the scoloblast this is scoloblast okay instead of nematocyst nematocyte uh, it has got what lazo cells or coloblast so this helps in the capturing of the food children and coming to the digestion it is extracellular and intracellular both extracellular and intracellular and sexes are not separate, so they are monoecious, uh, hermaphroditic in nature. But a new term, uh, monoecious is uh, represented here. And uh, here, reproduction is done only through the sexual reproduction. But uh, nidarians, 
Asexual reproduction also is done by fragmentation we have seen, isn't it? Gemule formation we saw. But here uh, only sexual reproduction is taking place and fertilization is external and the development is indirect. Okay, indirect means it is not the organism will not come out as it is. So one intermediate form will be there and that is called larval stage. So here in this uh, tenophos, we have got larval stages. I can uh, show you the larval stages. As I told you, the development is uh, indirect. It has got a larval stage. Larval uh, stage is uh, cidipid larva. And example, pleurobrachia, we can see. And other examples are tenoplana. That also we can see in this uh, Tenophora children. So, this is about the phylum Tenophora. And uh, this is uh, the continuation of another phylum, a uh, phylum Latihelminthus. As I told you, P is a silent form, Latihelminthus. Latihelminthus are otherwise called flatworms. It's a Greek term. Uh, Lati means broad or flat, and Helminth. Or helmin means always it is related to the term worm. So, lati helmin this means broad worm or the flat worms. So, usually we say lati helmin this are otherwise called flat worms. Okay. And they are dorso ventrally flattened. Dorso ventrally flattened. Okay. Tattai arco. Um, examples we can see. Planaria. Is an example liver fluke is an example this is tapeworm uh, tinea solium is an example and uh, coming to this uh, characteristic features these animals are uh, bilaterally symmetrical and uh, higher form of uh, layer children triploblastic animals so they are a uh, uh, coelomic cavity uh, we have no just a formation and it is uh, a coelomate because it is a flat though it is uh, uh, dwelling uh, three layers it is a coelomate animal okay it is a flat so no cavity is formed that is why it is otherwise called flat worms and uh, now organ uh, system of uh, organization organ level of uh, uh, organizations it has got so, organ system is formed. So, previously what did we see? Tissue uh, level, tissue system. Okay. Now, it is organ system. And uh, they have a moderate uh, zephalization. Moderate means very small. Zephalization means uh, head. So, formation of head is very, 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 very moderate. And they are unidirectional in movement. What do you mean by unidirectional? You know, only one direction it moves. Okay. It, it is going in one direction and uh, they are mostly in endoparasites and um, including human beings yeah it is uh, living as a parasite inside us uh, in our intestine um, we have got um, this kind of uh, parasites uh, a tape firm uh, good example and uh, endo means always inside. So, it lives inside us. Children, uh, ectoparasites are also there. Ecto means outer. Uh, human being ectoparasite, do we have? Yes, we have lies, louse, thalail, pain, that is ectoparasite. But this is endoparasite. And uh, hooks and uh, suckers are present in the parasite forms and uh, serves as an organ of attachment. What do you mean by that? It has got in the tino, uh, this uh, latihelminthus uh, in the tape worm. Um, we can uh, see the head here. I want you to see. This I want you to see. See here, it is a hooks and suckers. With the help of the hooks and suckers, it will just get here in the intestine and long tape like it will be free one end is free in the intestine 
and this part using the hooks and suckers it will get attached inside the intestine children so this is about the tinea solium it is a, a head of the tinea solium you can see the full view here see this is the small cephalization small head formation clear now uh, coming to the body segmentation it is not segmented actually and but it uh, uh, exhibit pseudo segmentation see segmentation is there but it is pseudo it is false segmentation true segmentation is not found here in lati helminthus and some of the parasitic uh, flatworms absorb nutrients directly from the host and their body surface. So, from the body surface, I told you, no. So, intestine body surface, it is uh, stuck in, it is attached in. So, it will absorb all the nutrients uh, of the host. Host means the person or the organism where it lives. So, it will suck the nutrients from the intestine wall directly. And um, however, but flatworms like liver fluke have their uh, incomplete digestive system. Uh, this is flatworm, uh, liver fluke. It has got only one mouth, only one opening it has got. Children already we have seen when we learned about the characteristic features. Um, if an organism has got only one opening, Mm, serves as the mouth and the excretion then it is called incomplete digestion isn't it so this is incomplete digestion here in planaria and uh, it, it has got a specialized excretory cells called the flame cells and that is helpful in uh, uh, organization what organization for the excretion and for the osmoregulation it is helpful children uh, you can see the collar cells this is the flame cell, a specialized type of cell called flame cell. Children, in the lower form of animals, we are looking into a different types of cells. Nidarians, we saw what different type of nematocyst for the capturing of the food we saw. And the tenophore, we have seen what claso or lazo cells we saw. And here it is a flame cell in this Lati helminthus for the uh, excretion purpose and the osmoregulation. And uh, here also uh, sexes are not separate that is uh, monoecious once again and fertilization is internal and uh, development through the larval stages children. And uh, there we have seen only one uh, sisipid larva, sidipid larva we have seen isn't it. But here uh, different forms of uh, larval uh, stages it has. Uh, like uh, what are they? Mm, Miracidium larvae, uh, sporocyst larvae, uh, radia, radia and uh, cercaria. All these are the different forms of the larval stage of latihelmin. This, this is Miracidium larva, this is sporocyst, uh, this is radia larva. Okay and we even we have uh, Mm, cercaria larva here and this is metacercaria larva. So all these are the larval forms of lati helminthus children. And um, a polyembryony is uh, very common in this flatworms that is uh, uh, liver flukes and uh, some uh, members of uh, planaria they show a very high part of uh, uh, regeneration. What is this regeneration? Any part you cut here in planaria that can become a new organism children that is called um, regeneration. So best example among the organisms we can take for regeneration that is the last part can become the full organism. That is good example in the uh, planaria uh, liver fluke and uh, it has high capacity. Next is uh, Phylum Askelminthus, it's a, another uh, term, Greek term. Askelminthus are called round worms and in Greek it is called asks means cavity and helminthus means worm. So, it has got a true cavity and it is a round worm. So, we are going to see about the Askelminthus only. Okay, it is uh, syncytial, it is otherwise called uh, nematoda okay 
and previously it is called nematoda how we, we saw children nidarians were otherwise previously called cylindrata like that this ascalminthus were previously called as nematoda and this phylum is uh, named as ascalminthus and the body of the worms are circular the, uh, that is round that is why it is called round worms and in cross section and uh, they are free living children sometimes they are free living few organisms or free living uh, few species mm, free living means they don't depend upon other organisms for its living okay but um, other uh, thing they are uh, parasitic uh, form and they depend upon the other animals to live on and they are um, a terrestrial uh, uh, they are free living parasitic on aquatic and terrestrial plants and animals and they are bilaterally symmetrical so we can have one straight imaginary line and they are triploblastic and pseudo coelomate animals why it is called pseudo coelomate coelomate coelom cavity will be there but it is false coelomate and now organ system level of organization is well marked here and the body is unsegmented children tapeworm false segmentation pseudo segmentation we have seen but here in ascalminthus it is uh, unsegmented no segmentation will be there so it is covered by a transparent tough covering and that is called cuticle you can see ascaris ascaris is a good example see here urta pulu it is cylindrical the outer layer is called cuticle we can say it is tough and protective uh, collagenous layer and elementary canal is complete children so what do you mean by that it has got anus mouth and the anus and um, uh, it is well developed with the mouth muscular pharynx and anus excretory system consists of rennet glands now coming to the different term here rennet gland is for um, ascalminthus sexes are separate now uh, male animal is different and female animal is different here and uh, uh, sometimes it exhibits sexual dimorphism often females are longer than the male fertilization is internal children and majority are oviparous oviparous na mutta pottu adil rendu young ones will come out okay example ascaris and a few are ovo viviparous children oviparous na egg laying viviparous na those are giving young ones okay giving birth ovo viviparous is the combination of egg laying but the uh, new one will be developed in, inside the egg and that will be given birth okay uchiriria bancrofti is an example for this ovo viviparity and uh, development may be direct or indirect sometimes and uh, uh, examples ascaris lumbricoides ascaris is the naaku poochi nammoda odambla irukirathu round worm enterobius this is also there it is a pin worm uchiriria bancrofti is filarial worm and this uchiriria bancrofti only it causes what children yeah, elephant tiasis yanai kal vyadi appdin solvaanga illaya that is caused by this uchiriria bancrofti only you can see the uh, picture here this person is uh, suffering from the filariasis see this is a normal leg and this person is suffering from the filariasis so caused by uchiriria bancrofti okay elephant tiasis yanai kal vyadi ye yana kal madhi ivarude kal maarido adanalai yanai kal vyadi this is uchiriria okay it is uh, carried out by the culex mosquito uh, vector is uh, culus mosquito we have okay and uh, you can uh, see other uh, examples also i want you to see this is uh, ancylostoma okay this also lives in us this is hookworm kokkipulu this is enterobius vermicularis this is called a pin worm this also lives in our intestine this is ascaris lumbricoides this also lives in our 
intestine if we have a, a bad sanitation uh, sanitary uh, you have a long nail you want to show off uh, you are not keeping up your uh, personal uh, life uh, personal hygiene then all these worms will be there since the beginning of uh, the birth of the child also children this will go in uh, till the end of the death uh, old age these can be living in us and uh, uh, cannot be avoidable as all and uh, all uh, and uh, unless you uh, maintain your proper sanitation and personal hygiene that's what we teach you in little drops also isn't it wash your hands uh, cut your nails okay uh, the toilet habits also before and after using your toilet you have to wash your hands with the soap sanitation is very 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 important unless you maintain your personal hygiene this will be living in you and this will uh, mm, Uh, um, absorb all the nutrients from us okay that is the main problem and once in 16 days this will lay their egg and uh, uh, the itching sensation will be there around the anus and um, see how when the calendar mummy and daddy will mark for cylinder for uh, eb uh, date bill to be paid like that even in our calendar we have to mark once in 3 uh, months that the the day for d worm okay if you go to the doctor and uh, uh, medical uh, shops this can be given d worming tablets can be given once uh, it is dewormed so once in 3 months you have to follow it then uh, deworming and also you have to keep yourself away from the uh, dirty or dirts and germs okay and personal hygiene next then we can avoid this kind of uh, endoparasitic infestation in our intestine able to get me children so this is about the um, lati helminthus hope you enjoyed this day's class you understood everything and you can see this is a hookworm you can see uh, it is excreted through our excreta this is filarial worm that uh, i told you ucheria bancrofti it lives in blood children this are rbcs and once again this is in our intestine okay hope you enjoyed this day's class i wish you all the best and stay blessed if at all is needed you go out otherwise stay back at home and do the homework enjoy learning being at home with your mother and father thank you so much god bless you